Good morning, and thank you again for being here on the Alabama Way. Um, we're, we're, this is our school um, show. We're talking about it's back to school, and we're talking a little bit different this year. We're kind of talking about different things, um, you know, parents need to be uh, prepared and ready for, and things they need to be aware of. And so one of the things we wanted to talk about is bullying. Mm -hmm. And today in our studios, we have Trisha Crane with the Alabama School Connection. Mm -hmm. She's the executive director. And we're gonna kind of talk about this bullying because Trisha, you know, there's a lot of things parents don't know when it comes to bullying. Right. And first I wanna ask you, let's talk about bullying. What is, when people look at it, harassment, bullying, mm -hmm. what is it? Well, bullying and harassment, the only difference really is when it comes to the state law. Mm -hmm. There's a state law that protects students from harassment. Mm -hmm. Bullying is a component of harassment, okay? Bullying is, um, you know, any sort of incident that makes the child feel uncomfortable, really. Uh, anything that's targeted to make the child feel badly or um, you know, there are a lot of different definitions of bullying, and it basically has to do with how it makes one feel. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. um, harassment is a repeated pattern, okay? So the law specifically says it has to be harassment, but it's, it, most districts look at bullying and harassment as the same thing. Okay. Now, um, you know, I, I know that legislation got in place in mm -hmm. 2009, I correct. think it was, mm -hmm. here in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Am I correct on you that? You are, yes. Okay, but in 2010 is when different schools and districts start putting things somewhat into play. Right. Why did it take so long? Well, that's a good question. Um, typically when bills are passed, they're passed, you know, the first part of the year during the legislative session. and. With this particular law, it required the State Department to come up with a model policy, okay, okay, for implementing the provisions of the law. And so it took the State Department a little while. Mm -hmm. um, then the second component was a form. The law requires a written form on which parents or children can report being harassed at school. So. They gave, uh, the law gave school districts until July of 2010 to have all of these components in place. A lot of boards, you know, you have to read a policy twice, maybe before you can pass it. So it was about a year from the time the law was passed until the requirements of the law went into place. Okay, so now you're telling me all schools should have this form. All schools should have this form. That was well said. Um, and I, it's very important that parents know where that form is. Um, the written form, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm not sure how wonderful a tool it is because it can be a barrier. Mm -hmm. It's hard to write things down. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it can give you feelings of, oh gosh, you know, this makes it so permanent. But yet, if you don't write it down, often there's no record of your reporting the incident. And there are requirements. The law requires that school districts implement, um, you know, come up with and implement a set of procedures for investigating bullying, resolving the incident, and, you know, really ensuring it doesn't happen again. Um, that's a lot of responsibility to put on schools. Mm -hmm. We as parents certainly have a responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and our responsibility, we really need to know where that form is. And it's a great time to ask at the beginning of school. So you have all your tools in place should this come up. Um, you don't want to look for it. You, know, you don't want to say, oh gosh, if my child is bullied, yes, I'm going for the form. But if the incident does arise, you're not in crisis mode. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of times it's a very emotional thing for parents. Mm -hmm. And so knowing what tools you have at your disposal, what tools you can use, it's kind of like a fire drill. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what to do when the situation arises. So you need to know where your form is. Oftentimes it'll be on the school district website. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not on the website, Ask the counselor at your child's school. Ask the principal. Hey, I just kind of want to know where this form is. Um, and take a note. Okay. Now, you know, I want to ask, you know, a lot of parents turn around and say, okay, this has happened to my child. Mm -hmm. We've kind of let it slide through or whatever mm -hmm. and whatever. Now, what are our rights here? 
Well, there are a couple of different sets of rights. Okay. Okay. You have your student has the right to be safe at school. That's just a Correct. basic right. Mm -hmm. So this is where different laws begin to intersect. Okay. So your child has a right to be safe at school. Now there are gun safety laws or all sorts of safety laws. Where bullying is concerned, the state has a law that says you must, you know, you should report the incident as the district wants you to report the incident, but there's got to be a form, mm -hmm. okay? The form is not optional. There has to be a form. Some districts will have, uh, they allow you to call in anonymous tip lines. Mm -hmm. um, you can, uh, some of them have Google Docs that mm -hmm. you can fill out. Mm -hmm. um, so there, the, but the, the law itself at the state level protects all students. Now, if your child is being bullied because of race, color, ethnicity, um, national origin, disability status, mm -hmm. that can rise to the level of a federal case. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand why your child is being bullied. Okay. Now, um, what are the steps that we, that a parent should take if they know that, you know, because you find a lot of times you got parents and kids are saying, you know, I don't want to make trouble. Mm -hmm. I don't want, but the kid is really being put in a compromising position. Oh, yes. They're uncomfortable, scared to go to school. Yes. Um, don't want to go to school mm -hmm. or whatever. So, what is the parent's first step to let me help my child? How do I help my child? Right. A good place to start is always talk with your child. If your child's behavior begins to change, mm -hmm. and I'm not a psychologist, you know, there are people who can tell you what are the signs that your child may be being bullied. Typically, you know, if they stop wanting to go to school, that's a big indicator. Right, right. Um, so you talk to your child, what's happening during the day? Mm -hmm. You know, bullying affects the way a child learns. Your child, if your child is in class and your child is thinking about, I don't want to go into the hallway because I'm going to be bullied, chances are good your child is not learning anything in that classroom. So it's affecting their level of learning. It's not just a, what happens in the hallways or on the school bus. So the first thing you need to do is get the facts straight. Mm -hmm. Try to stay calm. It's very difficult. Try to stay calm. Reach out to someone at the school that you trust. If you haven't been able to form a relationship, maybe you're in a new school, maybe you've gone to middle school now, right. start with the child's teacher and say, I don't quite know what to do. Um, you know, my child, I think my child might be being, you know, having a tough time here. Don't wait, mm -hmm. though. Don't be put off for any length of time. You know, allow the teacher to respond to you. But if the child, if your child is still having trouble, it's time to move to the next step and move quickly. Mm -hmm. It is really tough to put these things in writing. It is tough to, to feel like you might be getting someone else's child in trouble. Right. But without this form, without reporting it, the, the conversation can't even begin. True. That's true. Mm -hmm. And we've had so many incidents in the news where kids have taken their life right. because of bullying. and. Right. Um, you know, and you wonder sometimes, and not to blame the parent, mm -hmm. but you wonder, did you not see mm -hmm. this going on, or mm -hmm. was it no one to talk to, or right. or whatever? And then, uh, you know, you also see the kids are, they don't feel that they have anyone to tell, right. or that will believe what they're saying, or whatever. Right. Well, and that's where we, as the children's parents, right. we're their best advocate. We're their first advocate, we're their best advocate. So a lot of times, you know, if your child maybe has a history of embellishing things, mm -hmm. you might think they're overblowing it, but behavior tells it all. Right. Children are not good about hiding their behavior when things are wrong. Okay. Um, but as far as, you know, the, the flip side of it, what about the bully's parents? A lot of times, children who are bullying can be manipulative, and that's mm -hmm. kind of, why they make good bullies. Right. So, you know, it, the dialogue has to begin. It's tough. Um, and I strongly encourage people work through the school. Mm -hmm. Don't contact the bully's parents yourself right. unless you, maybe this is your friend from, mm -hmm. that can escalate a situation. Mm -hmm. So y you want to go through the appropriate channels. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have to elevate it to the, the next level, maybe the school board. 
Sometimes people contact attorneys. When your child is experiencing a situation in school that is affecting their learning, mm -hmm. we parents really have to sit up and take notice. We have to step in and advocate for our children. Okay. We're going to get ready and go for a break. And I, I want you to come back and we're going to talk about how Alabama is kind of standing on this, this law here. Okay. And uh, we're going to give some statistics here and okay. how many bullies we've kind of had here okay. in the state of Alabama. So you stay with us. We'll be right back here on the Alabama Way. Once again, we want to thank you for being here with us on the Alabama Way. If you've just tuned in, we have Trisha Crane here with us from the Alabama School Connections. Uh, she's the executive director, and today we're talking about bullying. Um, you know, we're talking more of the state of Alabama, because so we're talking about our kids here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, Trisha, before we started, you kind of gave us some statistics of the bullying that has been reported here in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many have so far been reported? Well, the, the state, part of the state law requires that school districts report incidents of harassment. And uh, since the law began, the definition, the, the incidents that are reported has changed a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? Um, for instance, maybe they didn't call fighting harassment. Mm -hmm. um, but now there are incidences of fighting that show up on the harassment data report. The 2012-13 data came out in February. Mm -hmm. uh, each June mm -hmm. is the re required reporting period. So schools have just finished reporting data for the 2013-14 school year. Mm -hmm. But we won't see that data probably until next February. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, you know, data is supposed to help us learn more about our communities. Mm -hmm. I have a woeful feeling that it's very underreported. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we had a total of 780 incidents reported out of a uh, school population of 740,000, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, either means we are doing something awfully right here mm -hmm. in Alabama or they're not getting reported. Right. And I understand the reluctance. Um, maybe it, part of it is parents and children. Maybe children and parents aren't reporting it. Maybe schools aren't reporting it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, schools are kind of sensitive mm -hmm. to the bad news and, mm -hmm. the, and the bad publicity mm -hmm. um, when bad things go on. But I think we need to understand the reporting tool is not to bash people with. The reporting tool is to say, do we have a problem with bullying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and at this point, again, Alabama should be up for some sort of international award because we, uh, the data tells us that we don't have any bullying in our schools. <laughs> so uh, I think that there probably needs to be more training mm -hmm. um, on what looks, what is bullying harassment, um, how should districts report it. Districts need to trust the public mm -hmm. with that information mm -hmm. to say, you know, okay, I see it in our middle school, you know, could, because some districts seem to be more honest than others. Right. Uh, maybe not as afraid of what the data says because they understand it's a shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. What happens at school isn't only the school's responsibility, mm -hmm. right? So if a school uh, could see this as an opportunity to say, We've got a climate culture issue here. We've got a lot of bullying going on. Community, we need your help. Um, there are other nonprofit organizations out there. The State Department has an effort to stop bullying. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of resources out there that the schools could reach out and say, we need help. Um, it just, I'm not quite sure why the disconnect is there. I will share that in Florida, um, a couple of years ago, they had a similar um, uh, epiphany mm -hmm. that the reporting was nowhere near what the anecdotes mm -hmm. were saying. So they did, uh, one of the news organizations there took it upon themselves to do investigative reports and said, hey, you know, this is woefully underreported. So either we need to strengthen the law or we need to train school personnel better or we need to just decide that we're going to be more honest mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, I haven't looked back to see have their reporting statistics changed, but this past year for the 2012-2013 school year, 780 incidents. The year before, I want to say 702. Mm -hmm. um, not a whole lot uh, when you think about what's probably actually going on in school. 
Now, you know, the other thing, we're talking, we, bullying takes a, I don't know how to put it here, a whole different realm mm -hmm. of kind of bullying things do. And the kids are on social media and different right. things too. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got this cyber bullying going on Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Right. That's a real problem. And the state law doesn't address cyber bullying. Okay. It, it's just omitted. Um, that doesn't mean that the districts themselves haven't developed policies mm -hmm. about cyberbullying. It's just there's no state guidance mm -hmm. to say, you know, and you have to have a policy about cyberbullying. So again, this is something to look at your district, mm -hmm. ask the questions. Again, before school starts is a great time so that you know what you need to do if something happens during the school year. Cyberbullying does come under the state criminal law statutes okay. okay so it's kind of like stalking um harassment you know one of these uh you know if your child is being cyber bullied you can reach out to the police department mm -hmm. which is really scary for a lot of parents you know they don't want to get on that radar they don't want their children on that radar but cyber bullying most of the incidents of children who have committed suicide are somehow related to cyberbullying. And we should say cyberbullying can be texting, mm -hmm. it can be through social media, mm -hmm. it can be email. Uh, it, cyber just means that some electronic uh, means of communication is used. So if you find your child, um, you know, maybe you look over their shoulder or maybe you know their Facebook login password or mm -hmm. maybe you follow their Twitter account, save that information okay if you see somebody's posted something mean about your child you might want to save that somehow screenshot it you know it depends on if you're on a computer or iphone or whatever save that image it might you know you might see you might get lucky and catch the first time it happens if it happens repeatedly then you're building evidence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nobody wants to take it that far. You'd like to think that, you know, you could have a conversation with school personnel or you could coach your child through some conflict resolution procedures. That isn't always the case. You don't want to wait too long. Um, children take, you know, ch different children have different sensitivities right, to that. Right, right. Um, you know, do you think as parents, maybe the beginning of the school, school year, you know how sometimes they come together and, you know, in the auditorium and tell, mm -hmm. they tell about, okay, this is what to expect for the, this year, whatever. Maybe parents should be proactive and go into the school system and say, yeah. you know, let's get together at the beginning of school and let's talk about this here. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Um, you know, I don't think that we as parents really use the um, advocacy rights that we're allowed, you know. Right. We don't just send our children to school and have to stay outside the school doors. Mm -hmm. Now, we can't go to class with our children, you know, uh, but there is uh, the opportunity to work with the school. I know of a lot of community efforts, uh, different, they sort of rise up and go away, they're tough to sustain, but, you know, um, I. One of my good friends stepped forward to a school system, a local school system, and said, we've got a problem with bullying in our elementary school. Mm -hmm. You know, elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the way children talk with each other that, that, you know, some children are more sensitive than others. Mm -hmm. So she went to the school and said, hey, you know, what can we do? Can we have a forum? Um, I know teachers have been proactive. There'll be, you know, a couple of teachers who maybe have witnessed it and said, we need to have a forum. We need to talk about this. We need to, uh, there are all sorts of different efforts going on in schools. I think schools really do recognize that this is a problem. Finding the right method to uh, get it under control is a joint responsibility. Very difficult to do, but it can be done. Right. We just have to keep trying. We can't let one incident of one horrible tragedy, you know, it usually gets everybody stirred up and mm -hmm. then Three weeks later, we're on to a different tragedy. So we need folks who will sustain the effort to say, this is really important. We want our children to feel safe at school. I don't want my, my son to feel that he's not um, welcome at school. I don't want my daughter to be afraid to uh, walk out into the hallways. These things affect our children's learning. Okay. 
Yeah, we're going to go, go on a break. We're going to come okay. back. Trisha, I want to talk about your organization that okay. you started, too. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more on bullying. But we want you to stay with it. And parents, we want you to be proactive when it comes to your kids going to school mm -hmm. and finding out things, you know. There's no policy. We were talking before the show, you know. My parents said, oh, get out of my room. You didn't tell our parents that in our day. You didn't tell us that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to kind of be nosy to know what's oh, going on with your kids and things before it's too late. So you stay with us right here on the Alabama Way. Once again, we want to thank you for being here with us on the Alabama Way. Once again, uh, Trisha, I really want, I don't want to make your mother mad, so I won't say Trish. Uh -huh. Trisha um, Crane, we want to thank you for being here with us mm -hmm. on the Alabama Way, talking about this important subject, mm -hmm. bullying, because once again, you know, with all the school districts that we have, we're also thinking that things aren't being reported and mm -hmm. some of our kids are suffering silently mm -hmm. um, on this here. So, you know, when you said the 780 that were reported, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of look at that and you say, ah, I, right. I, I really don't know about that. Is that accurate? Right. Is it not? But as parents, teachers, we all can play our part mm -hmm. in trying to bring this to the forefront absolutely and uh, getting it getting it out there mm -hmm. so how do you think how is our state coming along with this legislation here well um, <laughs> I have seen you know, following this since it was passed in 2009 um, it was a base uh, you know, it, it had some starting points mm -hmm. uh, reporting requirement investigative procedure requirement didn't address cyberbullying, um, really doesn't have any teeth to it. You mm -hmm. know, typically a law is passed and there's some uh, penalty if mm -hmm. you don't comply with the law. There really isn't a penalty here. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, this is a good idea, but if you don't do it, it's okay because we don't have any penalties. So I'm, I'm big on consequences. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, so there have been efforts to strengthen it mm -hmm. um, for three years in a row. There was an effort to strengthen it. It never made it um, to the full floor of either chamber, the House, or the Senate. And last year, nobody introduced a bill mm -hmm. to even attempt to strengthen it. So for me, you know, knowing how important this is to parents, it, it, of all the topics that I get contacted about, mm -hmm. Bullying is the number one topic. Mm -hmm. um, people want to know what are my rights mm -hmm. and you know how can I get the school district to help me or school officials to help me help my child. A lot of parents end up pulling their children out of school, mm -hmm. going to a private school, moving to a different district, um, homeschooling. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, we shouldn't have to feel like we have to take our right. children out of public exactly. school in order to address the bullying. Right. So I think it is incumbent upon us, people who speak in numbers, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we have a community group, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a neighborhood association mm -hmm. that says, you know, we don't want any more of this at our school, at our neighborhood school, work with the school officials, be willing to help mm -hmm. the work. You mm -hmm. know, school officials are very, very busy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are a lot of ways that communities can work together to improve um, the school climate, which is basically what we're talking about. And remember, too, we parents, we need to be thinking about the language that we use. Right. When we speak ill uh, of other people, mm -hmm. you know, I'm guilty of it. Mm -hmm. When I make a disparaging remark mm -hmm. about someone I'm unhappy with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure my children thought, well, okay, if mom mm -hmm. calls somebody a name, then I guess I can call right. somebody a name. Right. Self-behavior modification yes. is very much required. Yes. Now let's let's talk about the Alabama School Connection. Okay. Okay. How how do you all get involved with these different things? And parents are calling you mm -hmm. to find out these things. Tell me what's your connection there. Okay. Um, the Alabama School Connection at this point it's me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I do. Uh, I write uh, articles. Mm -hmm. um, I've recently incorporated as a nonprofit media organization, mm -hmm. which is fairly new for Alabama. Of course, Alabama Public Television uh, right. is nonprofit, but focusing specifically on K-12 education issues. Mm -hmm. And I think that people find the Alabama School Connection and find me through 
Google. Mm -hmm. I really think that's how folks uh, initially find me. I've had the good fortune to have a number of items published at the state level. Mm -hmm. um, state Department of Education mm -hmm. has shared some information. They understand mm -hmm. parents need to be kept in the loop. Um, we have traditionally in Alabama, it seems that we've just relied on districts and schools to communicate with their own parents. But there are some commonalities and some common ground that folks in Birmingham and folks in Hoover and folks in Trustful and folks in Alabaster might all be dealing with the same issue. And I really enjoy sharing information that empowers people to tackle their community struggles and their community problems. I tend to do a lot of data reporting. Mm -hmm. um, one of my um, pet projects is school finance. Mm -hmm. It's very important that we understand how much money we're spending on public school, how it's being spent, mm -hmm. um, has spending improved over the years, uh, which is uh, distressing that it hasn't. Um, and, uh, you know, if school funding mechanisms change, we parents typically learn about it after it happens. We need to be a part of the conversation. We need to be um, consulted. We need to be able to go to school board meetings or talk with principals about the issues that we're having in our schools. And so the Alabama School Connection is designed to help parents understand, and community members, um, you know, understand what are things going on in our, in our education world, mm -hmm. and what's the language, you know, what, what, what do those words mean? Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes we're kind of talking across each other. Right. So, so that we talk about in my dream world <laughs> we're going to talk about education every day like mm -hmm. we do about sports and weather okay? <laughs> okay so that's my goal is to have education be an everyday topic in Alabama okay now with your your, your new organization mm -hmm. that you're with mm -hmm. now that's part of you kind of integrating those a little bit together? Oh, yes, yes. I, really, before uh, the formal non Because I can tell status, you're passionate about it. I am, I am. I've done this on a volunteer basis mm -hmm. since 2009. Mm -hmm. um, and before that, I had a, a local effort in Hoover mm -hmm. where I spent four years doing the same thing, but really just for Hoover. So now I've branched out to cover the whole state. Um, and it is, it is topics of interest, mm -hmm. things happening at the state level, things mm -hmm. happening, um, sometimes local districts will do something really interesting. You know, our media mm -hmm. has struggled, right? right? We have fewer newspaper reporters. Right. We have fewer opportunities to share information. So we end up hearing about the student who made perfect on the ACT or the inappropriate actions between students and teachers. Mm -hmm. So I want to share all that stuff in between mm -hmm. that really matters to our communities and reconnect, hence the connection, reconnect communities and our schools. Okay. Now, how do we get in contact with you, Tisha? Well, the best way is through the website. Mm -hmm. um, um, simple email address. Okay. Uh, but the website address is Alabama School Connection. Dot org, mm -hmm. okay, and then the website. I mean, the email address is ASC, which is the acronym, right, for mm -hmm. Alabama School Connection. Mm -hmm. ASC at Alabama School Connection dot org, mm -hmm. and I'd love to hear from parents and teachers and school board members. I hear from all groups, uh -huh. but you know, what are the hot issues that are happening that you need help with in right. your communities? What kind of information can I supply through the Alabama School Connection that can help? have a better discussion about the issue in your community. And of course, if we don't open up the dialogue, we can't get anything done. Absolutely. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And thank you for being here with us on the Alabama.